G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to DCS World with Mags and welcome to the DCS Mission Editor and today for something different that I've had requested a few times we're going to build a mission in DCS, fairly simple one. We're going to include some SAM site setups, we're going to include a victory and failure state, and the idea is going to be to produce a mission that is a four player co-op and designed for relatively new players. So complexity is going to be relatively low, but it should be something that would be fun nonetheless. So we're going to do this on the Persian Gulf map. We're going to use Iran versus uh, NATO, the West, um, Emirates, so on. Now, whenever I'm designing a mission, I like to take a little bit of inspiration from real life events that have occurred at whatever time in order to give some level of plausibility to my missions rather than just being, you know, essentially ace combat type missions. So what we're going to go with today is a simple intercept mission for the MiG-21 and new players of the MiG-21. Now, what we're looking at is an intercept mission for American B-52s. So what I'm going to go for is B-52s. Say, three B-52s have been sent from Iraq, and they are being sent down to Emirates. They're being brought into the area as a bit of a, uh, let's call it a statement to Iran. Sorry, I'm doing this a little bit live. Also, before I... Um, go too far into this there may be a little bit of fan noise in the background at the moment it's bloody hot here today and I don't want to turn the fan off because I will cook it'll get you know, nearly 50 degrees in this office if I do anyways they're being brought over from Iraq to Emirates as a bit of a statement to Iran and on their flight path through they're going to cut through Iranian airspace just for a few moments as a bit of a oh an arrogance factor this has been done in at multiple times over the years around the world just bringing an aircraft whether it be a refueler or a reconnaissance aircraft a bomber and just gently cutting the very fine line of a hostile nation's airspace and this has in some cases actually resulted in a conflict or a shoot down actually taking place which is what we're going for so the b-52 is going to come over from iraq and we're going to bring them around into Emirates. So let's start off by placing our B-52s, because these will be the mission objectives. So, new aircraft group. B-52 target. Now we want, on the drop down, B-52H. And we're going to place just one for the moment. Now we want them to start a little bit further out this way. It over here. That'll do. And we're going to give them a basic flight plan. So I want them to cut one, two, three, and we want them to come in somewhere down around here for landing. Should we bring them into Al Dafra? So I'll change the waypoints here a little. So it'll come down the coast. Turning point just about there. So that'll work. Now, we would normally bring this up to a formation of three. But uh, unfortunately, for some reason, the mission editor will only let me place one, B7, uh, one B-52 at a time, rather. But that's fine. We'll uh, get around that in a second. Now, starting airspeed, 320 kilometers an hour. We're supposed to be in the descent pattern coming into land, so we want to slow that up. So initial speed will make... 700 kilometers per hour. We'll maintain 700 through the initial flight. And actually we want to change altitudes here as well. So start off at 5,000 meters. Now here on waypoint two, we'll slow that down to 600 kilometers an hour and we'll bring that down to 3,000 meters. Final turning point, we will bring down to 2,000 meters and that's fine and drop to 500. And from there, actually, what is the landing approach on Al Dafra? 
Yeah, we're slightly out. So I want to line this up fairly neat. We'll bring it down a little bit further. So it's got one final turn in and then lines up on runway and we set the final turning point to landing. So the aircraft is going to slowly decelerate as it goes through the points and drop altitude until it finally gets down to point three. So it'll be a deceleration from 600 kilometers an hour down to 500 kilometers an hour, dropping from 3,000 feet to 2,000 feet. Now at this point, what we do with these created, we select the first one, control C, getting nice and close and control V and control V. And we do a quick name change here, so they're easy to do it. Target one. Change that to target two. And we change that one to target three. Now that's gonna be important later for our triggers. We just need to be able to identify them. Now, what this will do is creates three flight plans that copy. Their turning points, they're not gonna stay in formation, but they'll stay relatively grouped the whole way through their descent. When they hit turning point three, they'll all turn in and descend down to Aldafra. Once they get to within range to start landing, one of the three will be approved to land, the other two won't. The other two will go automatically into a, into a uh, holding pattern while the first one lands, second one will land, and third one will land. I'm not even sure if Aldafra is actually big enough for a B-52 to land, but I'm pretty sure the AI should take care of that. Now, the only other thing I've got to do is on these points, when we've control seed them, is make sure we move them once so they all lock over and actually are accepted as a landing point. We'll just cycle through them. One is set to landing, three is set to landing, two is set to landing. All right, so that is our objectives. Now, on the one last thing to change is we want to... Let's set the lead B-17 to excellent. We'll leave the second B-17 on high. Oh, sorry, B-52, B-17, B-52. Um, second one on high, and we'll set the third one to random. So we'll have one extremely skilled B-52 that will launch all of its countermeasures and will maneuver against the player in a way that is extremely difficult. The second one will still be good, but not quite as good as the first, and the third one will be a wild card. It could be a really crap plane simulating a relatively new B-52 crew, or it could be just as good as the Ace and be an excellent level crew as well. So that's our targets, and they will all move at the same speed and will stay grouped. Now, we need players. So as I said, this is gonna be for the MiG-21, and I reckon, yeah, we'll deploy from here, here, I think. Yeah, that's one okay, so actually we'll check some of the other runways around. The important thing you're looking for is a runway with a wide taxiway with access to the Yeah, see so this is a problem one. Uh Kesham Island. This is your parking area. And you've got taxi routes onto the runway on either end. But then you've got to roll the aircraft down to either end of the runway, perform a turnaround before you can actually take off, which cuts down your launch time. This is going to be a relatively fast intercept mission, so you need a runway. Yeah, same problem here over in Bender. You need a runway that you have immediate access to one end of the runway straight off the taxiway, so you can deploy interceptors at a reasonable speed. This looks to be the best one. Actually, we've got quite a lot of area here. One, two, three, four, you've got parking for fighter bays, and it looks like you've got parking for four heavies as well, which this will work nicely. And we've got some down here. Yeah, this will work. All right, so what we'll do, new aircraft group. Now we're gonna change this one from USA, and we're gonna make sure we get this right to Iran. Player interceptor group. So again, we've got an ID on them. Now, we want to make sure we select the MiG-21 Biz. And we've got to set this one up right to begin with. So we're just gonna put this one here holding for the moment. Now, Serbia is not what we're after. We are after skin-wise, Iraq, PLAF, Iran. So we've got 51st Squadron and a standard skin, which once it loads up. Standard skin looks nice. We'll go with the standard skin. Uh, general guns mix, we want this to be 
full uh, air to air. Patrol medium range. Now we can set up a custom weapons grouping here, but this gives us our countermeasure packs. It's going to give us two infrared missiles and, oh, sorry, four infrared missiles, two on each wing, R60s, and two R3 radar guided missiles, as well as having a central fuel tank, which will be important because as it's an intercept mission, we're going to be running afterburn for it. So we'll select that as our standard loadout. Now players will have the option during startup to, of course, customize this but you want to make sure that there is at least a plausible loadout on the aircraft at the time it's spawned in, ready to go, so you can just go. So we'll go with that one there. And we're pretty good with everything else. So I'm pretty happy with that. So that's the first aircraft set up. Now, we are going to have it... Back to the first point here, we want to take off from ramp. Now, this will place the aircraft on a random number. Now, these are the, each of the numbers here are the parking areas for the individual aircraft. You can see it corresponds over here. Parking 11, it's in parking site 11. We don't want it here. We want it to start in parking 1. So select parking 1, moves the plane over to that area, and it will be parked and ready to go. It'll actually be parked you know, in line to taxi off, pointing away from the runway. The idea is you will taxi out, go either down or around or down through, depending on which way you want to go down to the runway and boom, you're gone. Now when that's done, we're going to set this to client as this is a multiplayer co-op mission. Uh, you have them set to client. This means when you load in, you'll get a load into the mission, you'll get a little page that will have all of the client aircraft options available and you can click on whichever one you want and it will seat you in that plane. Once uh, that's done, or if somebody, if you've got four people up, one clicks on there, their name will come up next to the aircraft, so you'll know who's assigned to which aircraft in the group. Pilot name will just be, we'll change it to Uzi. Uzi 1. And now we're going to multiply this by 4. And the reason why it's important to set up the aircraft before you do that is because each aircraft now all come with exactly the same settings. So all four aircraft are identical to one another. All you have to do is make sure their names are right. So you can, and this is really more than anything else, so you can just identify the air, each individual aircraft when you get your post-mission uh, debrief and see who fired what and easily identify who was in what aircraft. So Uzi 1, just confirm settings, Uzi 2, Uzi 3, Uzi 4. Now, if you want to get really creative, you can go through and change the individual tail numbers. So, for example, I can make Uzi 4 tail number 069. I can make, now that's 12, that's 11, and that's 1. Sorry, 13. I made Uzi 1 069. Clicked the wrong plane. All right. We'll make that 10. I'll make aircraft 4069, because that's probably the one I'll end up flying. There we go. Four. There we go. You can also set the comms frequencies or anything else. You can just leave them as default for the most part. They're okay, but you can set up custom comms if you're wanting to. Now, we need to give them a flight route. So again, we're going to create just one nav point for a start, because these are going to taxi out, and this is... Yeah, the descent path is coming in from the west, so takeoff will be to the east. So we'll take off around and out. Well, you can take off from either way, but it'll be easier going that way. So extend waypoint one for just off flight route, or off takeoff. And then we're going to fly just to here, set waypoint 3 to here, and waypoint 4, we reselect back to the runway for landing. Now that seems like a short route, but that's all it actually needs, and I'll show you why in just a moment. So climb out 2500, that's fine. I'm not going to worry about the airspeeds, because the airspeed settings here are for AI. These are all going to be player aircraft, so the players will be going as fast as they want to go. But I do want to set the requirement... 5,000 meters for waypoint 2 because that is essentially the intercept altitude that we want to meet the B-52s at. 
Return is fine, we can leave that exactly as it is. We don't have to play around anymore. But we do want to put the order off two. So advanced waypoint actions. And we're going to go to add. And I believe it's en route task. Search then engage. Uh, search then engage unit. And we're going to do this a couple of times. B52 target one. Add. Search and engage unit. Two. Add. Search. Ah. Search and engage unit. Three. Actually, that's worth showing. If we could group these three B-52s into one group, like we should be able to, rather than having having them as three individual groups, it would just be search and engage group, B-52, and that would be the end of it. But we don't have that option, so we have to select all three and put them on and that is fine one two and three and as you can see if we click out of that that wants to go away now thank you um as you can see at a waypoint two we now have intercept orders on one two and three so that is a pretty basic layout just for the start. Now we get a little bit more complex because we want to set in some triggers here and we want to put in some environmentals and set up our failure state. So for starters, we're going to need to go over here where we have the circle X. These create trigger zones. And we're actually going to want... Uh, I'll it again. We're going to want two of these. We'll put the second one down here for just the moment. So... Trigger zone, this is going to be run airspace. And we're going to set this as just red for the moment. And we're going to set our size to 50,000. That's a bit small. 100,000. Yeah, that should be good enough. Now, Iranian airspace, I actually don't have a map here for the direct outline for Iranian airspace, but Siri Island is Iranian controlled. All of this line through here is Iran. And I'm going to assume that Iranian airspace covers at least half of the Strait of Hormuz. So we're going to run it just here. So the nav points here just clip through, which is all we need for our mission setup. Now... The second trigger zone is going to be called safe zone. And again, we'll set that to just a nice light blue. And we're going to base this right on the map. The intercept point, yeah, about here. Yeah, that'll do. This gives us our engagement point. Now, the triggers we're going to set up here in the moment is when these B-52s cross Iranian airspace, we're going to get a kill order. Prior to them doing that, we don't actually have the... Uh, we haven't got an order to shoot down these B-52s just to intercept them. If they cross into Iranian airspace, we're given permission to fire. So that's going to be what is going to trigger here on the Iranian airspace trigger. When the B-52s hit the blue zone... That's it, they're out of range. And at this point, what we're going to do is spawn a flight of Mirage 2000s. And this area is also going to have surface to air missile defenses set up in it. Technically, they should probably be all the way up the coast, but for the purposes of this mission, that creates an end zone. If the players who have just launched from up here cannot kill the B-52s between this point and this point, they fail the mission. So there's a decent length for them to be able to do that. B-52 surprisingly can be difficult to take down, and they do run fast. While the initial airspeed I've set up at the moment is only 700 kilometers an hour, these things can do about 900 kilometers an hour if they open up the throttles, and once they are engaged, that is precisely what they will do. And a MiG-21 can go a lot faster than that, but it burns a lot of fuel doing it. You'll be amazed at how short your range can actually be. So it's entirely possible to fail this mission, but it shouldn't be too difficult. As I said, it's for new players. So these are our zones. We'll set up the triggers for these next. 
So this is our triggers page. Now there are more advanced ways of doing this, but I'm just going to set up some basic triggers for the moment. So we want trigger one, and this is going to be the airspace trigger. And it is going to trigger on, take control base, capture pilot, shot destroy. Now we'll leave that as it is, set two. All of group in zone. Iranian airspace, we'll leave that as is. Or. All of group in zone. Two. Or. Uh, all of group in zone, and we'll set three. Now, each of these B-52s are their own individual group. If any of them enters Iranian airspace, it immediately triggers the mission. And at this point, what we want to do is go AI task push. We want to send this one down to uh, message to group. Player intercept group. And at this point, you can put in whatever message you actually want. It'll pop up for 10 seconds in the top right-hand corner and works as a radio message. So I'm just going to put X in there for the moment and we'll fill that out in details later. So that will be the message and the trigger state should now work. Very simple. Nothing much to... Nothing much that's difficult there. Now, that's trigger one. We're actually going to set up, a number, uh, set up another one here. And we're going to do exactly the same thing again. Trigger again. This is going to be safe. Again, no event. Type once. New. All of group in zone. And this time it's going to be set to safe zone. We're going to go all. All of group in zone. Safe zone. Or. Zone and safe zone. Make sure that is set to three. So target one, that one needs to be set to target two. And we have target one, two, and three into safe zone. And again, this will be message to group. Now, the reason why I like doing it this way is I don't want to immediately, and once again, we'll set that to X. Um, I don't want to immediately end the mission if it's failed. Players will still have the option of shooting down the B-52s. They're going to fail the mission regardless. The B-52s have made it to the safe zone. But if they want to go into the safe zone and try and shoot down the B-52s, they can. That's entirely up to the player. But once the safe zone has been hit, as I said, I'm going to spawn in some Mirage 2000s and we're going to have air defences in the area, so they are running an extreme risk of getting killed. I don't want to take that option away from the player by having it forced end the mission, which I actually could. I could go down here and actually trigger it to end the mission once the B-52s end and boom, that's it. But I want the players to have the option to bring the aircraft back home even if they lose. So those two triggers will set up a message in the top right hand corner. At the moment the message is just X. I will edit the missions out a little bit later, but you get the basic idea on how that works. Now we need to set up the air defenses and we need to set up the environmentals. So we might actually do, actually the important one and the easiest one will be down here in the safe zone. So we're going to go a ground vehicle group. We'll set this back to the US because they have the shiniest toys. Blue AAA can be the name of the group, and we want to set it through to Air Defense. And we get a bunch of options here. So we've got the Vulcan M163. War Thunder players will be familiar with that one. It's available in here. We've got Patriot Missile Systems. Now this is looking more like what we're after. So these are in groups. So you have your commands, you have your launchers, and you have your radars. Search radar, search radar for Hawks, linebackers, ECS. These can be relatively complex to set up. I'm just trying to work out which combination would work best. So we'll probably go Patriot launches for a start. We just place one. And we can actually have a quick look at the vehicle. So this is our Patriot launcher. We're not going to worry about custom paint schemes. We've got some options there, but we won't worry about them. Now, what we want to do, at least for the moment, is set up three, four of these. 
spread them around. I want to make it very clear which one is the master. Because if you take the master, the whole group moves. But you can move the slaves to wherever the hell you want. And unlike uh, with aircraft groups, where if you put together one aircraft and then you change one aircraft in the flight, all aircraft flights, this isn't the case when it comes to ground units. So we can actually change these. So we got the launcher here. Now, go to the STR. This is one of the radar systems. And if we close out of that, we should even have a ring. Now for defense, so you can see there is our pickup. So the inner ring is the actual engagement zone. The outer ring is the point at which you will, or the radar can start detecting to. It can't launch until you're in the, within this area, but it will start detecting you out to there. This is actually good, because when these players are trying to intercept the B-52s down here, they'll get to this point, and all of a sudden their RWR is going to start screaming, because a Patriot missile system is capable of detecting them and is painting them. It can't fire yet, but it can detect them. Now, we want to go through to this one. I think it's ICC, if I recall. Yeah, that does seem to be the one. And that is our flag unit. Yes. Now, what it is, the, the way these groups actually work. Radar detects the incoming target. It communicates with the flag unit. The flag unit is the coordination unit for the missile group. Once it has decided which target it wants to engage, it then communicates with the launchers, which fire. This is exactly how the groups actually work in real life. So you can place the flag unit and the radar units wherever you want. You can have multiple radar units in a particular group, and you can have multiple launchers, which is what we will have in just a moment. Alright, so the second you get into this area, you're going to be, you'll already be detected, you'll be locked up, and as soon as you pass the blue line into the safe zone, you're going to be fired on by four Patriot missile launchers. That should do the job for the air defences, and we don't have to do anything with that. That will just automatically deploy at the start of the mission, and we'll do it sync, so we don't have to trigger that at all. Now, what I want to do is set ourselves to um, France, of all things we actually need to find. France, where the hell is the French? There, France. On there, let's set up... Uh, Mirage 2000C. Actually, I've messed this right up because I didn't do the aircraft configuration beforehand. This is the defense group. Actually, no, let's just call them the escort group. Yeah, I'll just leave that waypoint out for the moment. No, that's not what I want. Ah, oops. That was stupid. Select off. We'll do that again. Escort group. Alright, so... Aircraft. Now, we want this to be a fairly standard intercept group. We'll give them one drop tank so combat air patrol can be the loadout. And we want to go down here... Because we actually have a skin for Emirates, which I used on my last Mirage 2000 video. So, that's all good. Internal weight, center line drop tank, two radar guided missiles, so two magics and two uh, mattress. So I had to check the name then. And now, once again, we'll copy one, two, three. It gives us three aircraft in the group, and we'll leave them all on high setting. And we're going to give them one waypoint... And distance 500 meters, last waypoint, and that's all they'll do. So they will just follow along. Now to prevent them from going through, we're going to go for late activation. And yeah, they once they activate, so we'll close that down. Now we go back to triggers, new trigger on event, and well, that's set to nothing. This will be Escort. Group in zone, and once again in safe space. Group in zone, and group in zone. So, even any of the three B-17s... Actually, I've got to... Ah, I've got to select the bright B-17s. Oops. 
So one, two, and three, any of those three enter zone. And this time what we're going to do, group activate, escort group. All right, so now with that trigger in place, what will happen, B-52s come through, the second they cross the line into safe zone, the escort group's going to spawn. It's gonna spawn at 900 kilometers an hour and it's gonna spawn heading straight towards where the B-17s will, or the B-52s, keep saying B-17s, where the B-52s will cross the line into the safe zone. And they'll immediately form up and start to follow the, uh, uh, follow the B-52s. If the MiG-21s are still in pursuit at that point, they'll act on their own AI to turn around and engage the hostile aircraft. And at exactly the same time, four Patriot missile systems will already be active inside of the zone. So that's all we need to do to set up. That sets up our failure state. We now have our target objective, we have our mission objective, and we have our failure state set up, including mission to say, no, you didn't do the job, bad luck, go home. And if you don't go home and you continue trying to uh, pursue the B-52s, bad things will happen in here. So now, I'm a YouTuber. I like to make sure things are very pretty when I'm uh, doing my missions. So what I wanna do is actually set up some environmentals around the main takeoff and return runway so it doesn't look so bland. Because as it currently is, assuming all four players spawned in all at once, you'd have four players spawning in on an empty runway and that's it, there will be nothing else here. So we're gonna set up some environmentals to make everything look a little bit prettier. So you wanna go to this one here, which is the static object group. Now, this is important, the more assets you load into the game the or into the mission the more power it's going to take pc wise in order to be able to run the mission static objects will sit inside of the environment and actually have very little overhead so you can put in go down here so we've got planes we can select a country and we can select a uh, a aircraft type and we can put them around and they will just sit on the runways no problems at all and they have very little overhead you can sit live groups but at that point the game has to basically manage the ai even if the planes are just sitting on the runway and they have no orders to move they're still got to have an ai that is managed so the the uh, your computer is going to have to deal with those so you want to put static objects down instead of um, anybody, uh, any live vehicles for, um, for environmental work. Now, what we're after here, we want to set this to Iran because this is an Iranian runway and we don't need to change any of the names here. It's just, what do we want to place? Now, I do like MiG-29s. MiG-29s are very pretty. Now, because we've preset it, we give the option of a couple of paint jobs. So we've got sand blue and blue gray. I like the sand blue. Let's go with sand blue. All right, so place one for a start. Now these, we have to give them a direction so we can zoom in nice and close. You can select this by selecting down here. You can have, you know, map view, satellite view, yeah, so on and so forth. So you can select your views and turn the ability to see vehicles off down here. So if you haven't got any of this, the actual, uh, the animations where you can see the vehicles themselves, that's where you activate them in the editor. Now control C just on the unit once it's placed and angled and we can go two and three. We'll stagger them a little bit so they're not all perfectly in line because well active runways things are very rarely ever perfect and we'll just change the angles on them ever so slightly to make it feel a little bit less copy paste and where it is. So that gives us three MiG-29s on the ground there. Now we have this large area over here for large aircraft. So again, we're gonna to go to static objects and we'll go to, what have they got in the way of big girls? You got Yak 52s, SU 24s, SU 25. I'm aware Yak 52 isn't a big aircraft. I'm just sort of having a look and see what we've got. KC 130s, uh, IL 76 MD. That'll work. And, yep, now for this one, let's put one just here. And then let's place another. We'll give it a 180. Place 
place it just here now. I'll do something special with those in just a second as well. All right, ladies and gents, so I had a small issue with the mission editor. It crashed, and uh, in rebuilding everything to get back to where I was, I actually completed the mission. So we'll just walk over the last of what I've done to finalize this. So we were down here at the runway to begin with. So as you can see, I've put in a couple more environmental units. We have the uh, IL-76 MDs parked down to give it out. We've got some helicopters that I placed over here. These are MI-8s. That is parked around to give something on the right hand side of the runway and a few other units just to pretty it up now the one other thing that i have added here is an sa11 system now i've added it for two reasons first the sa11s i picked them because they're short enough range that they won't interfere with the flight path of the b52s but they do allow an option that if a player can take off and manage to turn one of the b52s they'll into the the launch range they can potentially kill the b52s or at least one of them without actually firing a missile themselves by pushing it into SAM range and the surface air missiles will take them out as well. Two, in the long run, the idea of building the mission this complete is if I wanted to create a follow-on mission from this one, I can simply delete the key mission units. So delete the B-52s, delete the, the escort squadron and so on. And what I'll end up doing is having a template that I can use just to add new mission units. So I don't have to rebuild this mission every single time I want to base a mission with this kind of a setup. I can use this as a template, delete the key mission units, and put new key mission units in for whatever the new units are, change the time of day, boom, there we go, we have a new mission. So the SA-11 system is in place and done. Now, the MiG-21s will be taking off to the intercept point to try and catch the B-52s. Now the big part here, actually the other thing I've done is down here, just for the record, move the uh, the Patriot missile system close to the runway and just tidied up things down south to make it a bit neater so it's right on the money. Anyways, the B-52s, the big part that a lot of people forget in their missions, and I see this every time, almost every time that I use somebody else's mission, is timings. And this is important. Down here at the start, we have start time, 7 o'clock. Now, if we go through to the weather effects tab, the mission starts at 7 o'clock. You spawn in at 7 o'clock. I've also set weather effects here. You can either custom set them here or you can just use a preset template and then customize it if you want. That's what I've done. I've uh, actually preset it's uh, an autumn uh, heavy, a rainy day and I've done a little tweaking. That's what I'm running here. Uh, that gives you clouds, rain, so on. But anyways, seven o'clock is the start time. So the B-17 spawn at the same time the players do as they're getting ready to take off. Now, on the waypoints are timed. So, waypoint one, 700 kilometers an hour. 5,000 meters, the time to reach is 7 minutes and uh, uh, we'll re receive it 15 minutes and 14 seconds. So 15 minutes and 14 seconds after spawn, they make it to waypoint 1. At this point, waypoint 2 will take 27 minutes. They slow and I've entered some, we better check all these. These are supposed to be at 650. 650 on that one, 550. Yeah, I've got a couple of numbers wrong. Good thing I spotted that. Anyways. Arrival point at this one, 25 minutes and 18 seconds. So we've got 10 minutes to get from here to here. The final waypoint, which is right on the edge of the safe zone, they decelerate to 500 kilometers an hour and 2000 meters, and it will take 38 minutes from start to actually achieve this point. So from the safe zone edge to mission start, 38 minutes and 19 seconds is your mission time. If you have not killed all three B-52s in that time, mission is failed. So that gives you the time frame for the mission and what it's going to take place in. It also allows you to then calculate a fuel load. Now, you can fudge this a little bit if you want to spend the time on the runway to customize the load out of the MiG-21s and add two additional fuel tanks. But it's only got one tank of fuel and it's got one external centerline fuel tank. That's all it's carrying. Making the intercept before the 15 minute point should be entirely possible if you get the start up right, you get straight out to taxi and you firewall it and run. But you're gonna burn a lot of fuel doing that. You'll empty the external tank before you make the intercept and you'll be just on internal fuel. If you're a little bit late doing that, you're gonna to have to conserve fuel, which is gonna allow the B-52s to move further down the line. And you're gonna to have to balance how much fuel you're carrying from takeoff to the intercept point to be able to kill the B-52s and still have enough fuel to make it home. If you don't balance your fuel load and you don't make it home, remember if you shoot down the B-52s and don't make it back to the runway, you still kind of failed. So you still have to make it back. And that's what you gotta balance on, is 
the time it's going to take the B-52s to get around and then compare it against the fuel loads you've got. As I said, you can put extra external tanks on the MiG-21s and it'll give you more range, but those extra fuel tanks are going to make the MiG-21 heavier, it's going to make it slower to take off, it's going to give it a lower top speed, so you're probably not going to make the initial 15 minute point and the B-52s are going to be moving away. So even though you've got more fuel for more range, your intercept time is going to be much slower and the window you're going to have bringing this in is much closer. And this is uh, this sort of reflects back on the Mirage 2000 mission that I made and put on the channel not that long ago. It was all around fuel distance and timings as well. And when I actually played through the mission, if you recall, I only managed to actually get the targets 10 nautical miles away from their target point. This is how you balance this. You want to know how fast the units are moving to the travel point, how much fuel you have, and how long it'll take you roughly to get to point. Assuming the flight speeds that are in there at 500 kilometers an hour, it's still going to take eight minutes at 500 kilometers an hour just to get to waypoint two, not counting the time it takes to start up the aircraft. So add two minutes, you're looking at about 10 minutes to waypoint two at 500 kilometers an hour. You're probably going to be going faster than that, so you're probably looking at, at a, let's say, non-firewalled, so you haven't got the afterburners lit, conservative speed 600 800 kilometers an hour hitting the waypoint two assuming you took the exact waypoints that i've programmed out here is between six to eight minutes which is going to put the b-52s around about here so that is assuming everything goes right and you get the takeoffs perfect you'll arrive on time if you're a little delayed and if once you put four players in aircraft and try and get them to taxi around and all get their engine startups right and everybody get their planes fired up and then everybody get the takeoff and everybody get the formation put together, it could take 10 minutes to get that done and then a couple of minutes on top of that to actually get to the intercept point at which point you've missed waypoint one and the B-17s are already on the return stretch. So you're already in fuel conservation mode in order to be able to get there. So it'll depend on how good the group is as to how well this performed. It should still be easy to do. This is designed for a relatively new player or a player still learning the MiG-21, hence why there is no escorts on the B-52s. An alternative version of this mission would, of course, put a couple of fighters that would probably take off from Kassab and have them intercept the B-52s and have them escort through this area so you'd now have to deal with the escorts as well as the B-52s as well. But just for a basic mission for new players, this is good enough and the timings themselves should create enough of a challenge for a new player just getting everything right in order to be able to complete the mission. But anyways, that is the mission there. That is a relatively simplistic mission with tr triggers put together designed for new players that is based on a plausible situation, all completed and functional. Total time to actually make this mission from scratch, if I wasn't doing the, the live recording, was just focusing entirely on this, would be a little bit less than an hour. The more complex you get, the longer the missions are going to take. Some of the more complex ones I've made have actually taken a couple of days to get together. But about an hour to put together something like this is pretty comfortable. Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope this gives you a little bit of an idea on how the mission editor works and gives you some ideas for your own missions. As always, remember to check the video description down below for links to my social media, to my Discord, to my Twitch, to my Patreon. Although Patreon is rather unpopular at the moment, but you get that. Um, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do there. Sign up for the Discord if you would like to talk to me in person. I'm always willing to chat whenever I'm floating around. And until next time, remember to click that like button, share and subscribe if you would like to see more. And as always, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.